Let's talk about how to safely remove asbestos or black mold. First and foremost, it is not recommended for individual people to try to remove asbestos or black mold. It's recommended to contact a specialist to make this removal. With that being said, sometimes it's just not financially viable for you to hire a specialist. We're gonna to try to do our best to give you the steps to go ahead and properly identify and remove asbestos or black mold. First, we're gonna talk about the differences between asbestos and black mold. So what is asbestos? Between the 1940s and 1980s, asbestos was commonly used for installation and ceiling tiles and flooring. The reason asbestos was commonly used between the 1940s and 1980s was because it was a cheap alternative to the materials they were using for insulation at the time. Unfortunately, since then we've found that asbestos can cause harmful lung diseases and cancer, such as mesothelioma. Another unfortunate part of, about asbestos, it's very hard to see with the naked eye. It can only be seen with a microscopic lens. So how do you really identify if you have asbestos? First of all, the first thing to take into consideration is when your home was built. Again, we mentioned that in 1940 through 1980, asbestos was commonly used. So if your building or home was built during this time, you may have asbestos. Asbestos cannot be seen by the naked eye and you need a microscopic lens to actually see asbestos. For this reason, it is highly recommended to use a asbestos removal specialist. Now, let's talk about black mold. What exactly is black mold? Black mold is actually a fungi, so it usually grows just like any other fungus in cold, damp situations and very humid areas. This could be in your bathroom, your kitchen, or inside your basement. When you're trying to identify black mold, you're gonna be looking for a dark green or a blackish and a very slimy texture, usually gonna be found on ceilings or on the floor. One big reason why black mold is bad is because it can cause respiratory problems and other health issues similar to asbestos. Again, this is a highly toxic, so again, we recommend you using a specialist to actually have it removed. Now that you know a little bit more about the differences between asbestos and black mold, we're gonna talk about the steps that need to be taken when you're preparing to remove black mold or asbestos from wherever you're working. First and foremost, you need to wear protective gear. This includes disposable coveralls, gloves, goggles, and a respirator. Next, you need to seal off the work area. Then you need to dampen the material. The reason being is this minimizes the release of asbestos fibers. Now you can remove the asbestos material. After removing the asbestos material, double bag it and dispose of the waste. Now let's talk about black mold removal. Similar to asbestos removal, you need to wear the proper protective gear. This includes disposable coveralls, gloves, goggles, and again, a respirator. Just like the asbestos removal, you'll need to seal off the area and dampen it. Then you'll be able to remove the mold. After you remove the mold, you want to make sure you dry the area. This helps prevent the mold from coming back. And finally, you still need to dispose of the waste properly. So as always, we want to provide you the recommendations of what kind of respirators you may need to use in these types of situations. For asbestos and mold removal, these are the best respirators that we recommend. The most important part is going to be the filter here. Similar to most projects, you probably want to use a power air purifying respirator here. But again, if it's not financially viable, then you can use a APR, air purifying respirator, just a full face or a half face respirator. First thing we're gonna talk about, like I said, it's gonna be the filters. Asbestos is highly toxic. So you need the max protection you can get. So either a P100 rated filter or a P3 filter. You can get away with using just like our P3P pancake pink filter here. Or if you're using any type of chemical solvent that might actually have some type of vapor that comes out of it, you might actually wanna use this multi-purpose Max Pro P3 P3O filter. It also has a P3 particulate rating, but it also has the filtration capabilities of organic, inorganic, acetic gases, and ammonia. Now let's talk about the respirators. Again, you can get away with using like a half-face respirator if you go this way. The T61 half-face respirator takes industry standard bayonet style filters, which means then you can actually use a pancake pink, pancake P100 or P3P filter, or the Max Pro multi-purpose P3O filter. One thing a lot of people don't really pay attention to when they're dealing with mold or asbestos removal is that you deal with dark areas. It, it can get very difficult to see what you're doing. That's why we also recommend use a full face respirator with a light amber face shield. This helps increase visual acuity and increases the contrast between objects. It allows you to see a little bit better in low light conditions. So once again, we wanna reiterate, hire a specialist to deal with the black mold or the asbestos removal. But if, again, you can't, I hope these tips help you better understand what you may need to do when you're dealing with this on your own. If you found this helpful, go ahead and click the subscribe button here and follow Parcel Safety. We'll be able to serve you more YouTube content that might be relevant to you.